Welcome everyone. I'm happy to have you in this class. Thanks for selecting my class this semester. Today's lecture is the first one of the course named as the Analysis of the Beauty. As in the course outline, the facial aesthetics is the most important part when we define the beauty of human being. The beauty can be described differently according to era, culture, environment, and ethnicity, and so on. However, the common factors could be found, which comprise the beauty, such as symmetry and usefulness. This course deals with the digitization of the factors using biometrics of the craniofacial structures and the study on the current research trends in addition to the cultural understandings. In today's didactic lecture, I'm gonna talking about the mutual or interpersonal understandings of the concept of the beauty first, and then to expand or facilitate the patient's thoughts about the standards of beauty. The traditional concept of the beauty shall be discussed from the perspective of orthodontist. After then, in the next sessions, the changing trends of the beauty according to the globalization will be added in conclusions. As a doctor or healthcare provider, it is well known that the main goals of the doctor-patient communications are creating a good interpersonal relationship, facilitating exchange of information, and including patients in appropriate decision-making. This is especially important for doctors specializing in the field of aesthetic plastic surgery or dentists such as oral and maxillofacial surgeons, orthodontists, and even general practitioners who use botulinum toxins and, and or various types of fillers. Because beauty perceptions and standards continuously change over time and from one generation to the next generation, the doctors must discern people's perceptions of beauty and interpret contemporary trends in aesthetic preference, enabling us to better meet the expectations of the general public. In clinical practice, it is often observed that traditional beauty standards or data regarding ideal facial configurations does not correspond with the actual desires of the general public. In addition, sometimes there are discrepancies in beauty standards and preferences between aesthetic plastic surgeons and the general public. Furthermore, the beauty specialist doctors doesn't seem to have the same concepts for information with how general physicians or other doctors feel about facial beauty. Notions of facial attractiveness have been influenced by developments in society which potentially play a role in influencing the perception of attractiveness. As a matter of fact, there have been many reports that suggest that perceptions of the attractiveness of face vary with the gender and race of the respondent. Beauty is a kind of emergent concept composed of objective, subjective, and relational dimensions and aesthetic plastic surgeons must understand the characteristics of beauty comprehensively. Let's talk about the concept of the beauty and why the beauty is important in this generation first. As society, we have a deeply rooted obsessions with beauty. From little girls trying on their mother's high heels, to elderly women spending hours in salons dying and styling their hair, the indulgence to look and feel beautiful pervades all age groups and walks of society. We even have whole magazine editions dedicated to show and exhort the most beautiful in society. 
Our fascination is not dumbfounded as it pays to be beautiful. Lately, and the highest paid supermodel in the world, Gigi Bunchon, earned 42 million in 2013, even more than her equally famous football quarterback husband, Tom Brady, who made 38.3 million. Please excuse the data presented in somewhat outdated in this year. The 10 highest paid supermodels in the world collectively brought home 82.8 million in 2013. In 2012, the median household income for the USA was around 50,000, a pale comparison. Although the average person makes far less than the most beautiful, the average will still pay to try and enhance his or her own attractiveness. Even during times of economic recession, when consumer spending typically declines, women's spending on beauty products, the so-called lipstick effect, appears to increase. Interestingly, this is a phenomenon that occurs worldwide. The Kalahari Bushmen of the Africa use animal fats as a skin moisturizer even during times of famine. In modern day society, studies do show that faces with makeup are viewed as more attractive, feminine, and healthy. The mass market has clearly picked up on our preoccupation with looks and our willingness to spend on beauty enhancing products so that we are now constantly bombarded with images of physical perfection, magic portion of ageless skin, and instantaneous makeup tricks to potentially look gorgeous. Technology feeds into our hunger for beauty with the ability to morph average looks to beautiful and enhance already innate gorgeous woman. Studies show that the physical attractiveness of human advertisement model is able to influence inanimate object evaluation, more so if the product itself would serve the purpose of enhancing the customer's physical attractiveness. In 2012, the average American household spent $628 on personal care products and services. In addition to money, they spend much time on beauty enhancing measures. The average American wife spends 44 minutes washing, dressing, and grooming, while the average American husband spends 32 minutes on a typical day. What about Korean wife and husband? And what about you, students? Beauty endeavor holds steady over the ages, with single American women aged 70 and older spending 43 minutes grooming on a typical day. The appeal of enhancing attraction appears to be quite commonplace. However, keeping it up clearly can be quite costly and time-consuming. In the Greek myth of Narcissus, a very handsome hunter looks into the water and falls in love with his own reflection. He died there alone, unable to look away from his own beauty. This was the man's first mirror, the still water of clear pool. In Mesopotamia, around 3500 BC came about the Bronze Age when polished metal became the preferred material for mirrors. As soon as technology improved, silver was exchanged for bronze, with its more neutral color allowing for better reflection. In today's age, we only have to turn a corner to see our own reflection in a smooth and unvarnished glass mirror. Seeing one's own reflection 
has spurred the desire to change, manipulate, conceal, and enhance our given looks. With American men and women spending billions of dollars every year on beauty enhancing measures. In fact, the history of cosmetics spans almost every society on Earth over a period of at least 6,000 years of human life. The word cosmetic stems from the Greek kosmetikios, meaning skilled in decorating. Palette for grinding and mixing face powders and eye paint dating to 6000 before Christ have been unearthed by archaeologists and by 4000 BC in ancient Egypt the art of makeup application was widely practiced. Eye makeup was an early development with green being the preferred color. It was made from the powdered malachite, a green copper ore, and applied to the upper and lower eyelid. Core, a black paste composed of the powdered alimony, burnt almonds, black copper oxide, and brown clay orchard was added to make the eyeliner darker, and furthermore, ground beetle shells were added to the produce glitter. Another early development was skin creams, with the Romans using beeswax, olive oil, and rose water to create a proper product. Rouge and facial powder was also a favorite type of makeup throughout the history. Greek collisions amplified the rouge's redness by first coating their skin with white powder. These whitening powders contain large amount of lead that would eventually result in premature deaths over the next 2,000 years. The famous Queen Elizabeth I of England is well known for her use of lead, creating a look known as the Mask of Youths, wanting to be known as the Virgin Queen. Arsenic complexion wafer were consumed in the 18th century in Europe producing a white pallor through a state of induced anemia, again a poisonous way to whiten the skin. Studies that are more recent have shown that visible skin color distribution plays an important role in the perception of female attractiveness. Human beings are thought to have a preference for skin that conveys youth and health. Recent research has demonstrated that males and females are sensitive to skin color variations and such variations can affect the perception of the attractiveness, age, and health, thus promoting the design of makeup and cosmetic products able to provide more even skin color. Let's stop talking about the makeup and find out why we consider the beauty or appearance very important. So what does this magnificent world beauty truly mean? And what are the implications for being beautiful? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines beauty as the quality or aggregate of qualities in a person or thing that gives pleasures to the sense or pleasurably exalts the mind or spirit. According to the another dictionary, the Wikipedia, a popularly collaboratively edited free internet encyclopedia, an ideal beauty is an entity which is admired or possesses features widely attributed to beauty in a particular culture or perfection. Beauty has a even been documented to transgress the physical amounting to an experience leading to emotional well-being and attraction. Although there are personal preferences to beauty and standards that vary across cultures and times, within a society at a given point of time, there is a substantial agreement to what constitutes human beauty. 
As beauty is able to represent a standard of comparison, it can cause inequalities and dissatisfaction when not achieved. Our human fascination with beauty compounded with the inequalities it presents to society has caused multiple different disciplines to extensively study these topics. Economists, psychologists, sociologists, social psychologists, and anthropologists, to name a few, have spent years and made careers out of studying the concept of beauty and the ramification it presents to society. To economists who study fulcronomics, the study of the economics of physical attractiveness, beauty is considered a scarce resource with those deficient experiencing negative feelings and consequences. Developed by researchers at the University of Michigan in 1971, the most widely used scale to study beauty uses 5 to 1 rating scheme, with special instruction on what rating choices mean, as follows. The score 5 means strikingly handsome or beautiful. The score 4 means good looking, above average for age and sex. Point 3 denotes average looks for age and sex. Point 2 quite plain, below average for age and sex. Point 1 homely. Although individuals will always vary to some degree when rating others' attractiveness, there is a remarkable tendency to generally agree within categories with complete disagreement about looks being an extraordinarily rare event. Even when accounting for different interactions and interviewers, there still remains the tendency to view interviewees look in although not identical, quite similar way. With respect to age, looks of younger people are overall generally rated more favorably than those of older people. However, photos taken of the same persons over time have been shown to get similar ratings, illustrating that a person's looks relative to those of others does not change greatly over the lifetime. The importance of beauty holds true at all ages and also worldwide. Not deemed cute enough to sing on a national television during the 2008 Summer Olympics, a cuter girl was ordered to lip sync during the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympic Games. In other countries, not only matrimonial but also help wanted advertisements mention a requirement for good looks and a nice appearance. Interestingly, although there is a worldwide importance of beauty and rating concurrence, there are overall cultural nuance. Americans in general, and men more so than women, appear more able to give a one point, or that is to say, homely rating, at least in studies compared to Canadians and Chinese. Regardless, there is overall worldwide agreement on ability to stratify those into disparate categories of strikingly handsome and homely, with subsequent societal implications. The ability to categorize and quantify beauty has allowed research to show us that there are clear advantages to being physically attractive. In 1972, researchers first termed this phenomenon as what is beautiful is good, to describe the human tendency to assume that attractive people possess positive attributes. This phenomenon is robust with physically attractive people perceived as being happier and more successful than unattractive people. Desirable characteristics such as social competence, intelligence, and likability 
have also been associated with beauty. Good-looking people have been found to be less lonely, less socially anxious, more popular, better and more persuasive communicators, and more sexually experienced than unattractive people. In the marriage market, although men's looks do not matter as much, women's looks are at a high premium. More attractive women are able to secure mates that are more intelligent, successful, and richer. In general, attractive people generally marry other attractive people, conferring beauty to the next generation. There is even an association between intelligence and attraction. Thus, one author speculates that if women generally prefer intelligent male because of presumably higher incomes and social status, and if most men prefer attractive women, then over time these two characteristics will tend to co-vary. From a younger age, a person's physical attractiveness is the most accessible attribute in social interactions and has the ability to create the first impressions. It can even affect the attitudes that parents hold about their own infants. On measures of smartness, likability, and good baby, positive association were related to rating of attractiveness. Mothers of more attractive infants were found to be more affectionate and playful compared to mothers of the less attractive infants, these mothers being more attentive to other people rather than their own children. Beautiful children have been rated as more intelligent with higher academic potentials compared to those who were less attractive. In a large metadata analysis, Physically attractive students were judged more favorably by teachers in a vast number of dimensions including intelligence, academic potential, grades, friendliness, and social skills. Teachers even judged the parents of attractive children to care more about education and to set higher goals for their children. This has ongoing implications with such self-fulfilling prophecies as students may live up to the notion and expectations that others assume for them. When measured alone, increased physical attractiveness is positively correlated with the student's cumulative grade point average. Students judge teachers in the same fashion. Professors perceived as attractive receive higher students' evaluations than do unattractive controls that are matched for department and gender, and students more likely want to be in the class of attractive teacher, indicating that the good-looking teachers would be a more effective and nicer educator. Even preschoolers have been shown to often make judgment about unknown peers with the beauty is good stereotype, choosing attractive peers as a potential friends. This transcends to older children as well, with attractiveness being positively correlated with popularity in adolescence. This includes romantic popularity, with literature showing that physically attractive adolescents being more satisfied with their romantic life. The shaping of future success in both the beginning of the family formation and the labor market appear to occur at a younger age, with beauty parameters being an important component with enduring effect. Let's continue to why the beauty is important to the clinician. Society enables the most attractive to trade beauty to raise standard of living, improve interpersonal relations, and partake in more enjoyable workplaces. The sad truth is that in our worldwide society, being beautiful makes other people like you more. Physically beautiful persons are consistently judged to be qualitatively superior with associated traits of enhanced mental acuity, 
moral goodness, and interpersonal skills. There is a powerful evidence that attractiveness not only affects the opinions of others, but also permeates actions toward others. An understanding of the historical aspect, science, and implications of beauty is quintessential for the dermatologist, plastic surgeon, dentist, and others who practice aesthetic field. Humans are clearly hardwired to respond more favorably to attractive people, and many of our patients are driven to our clinics to enhance their looks and improve their quality of life. Cosmetics, hairstyle, clothing, and even innate facial characteristics can be manipulated to enhance beauty. And researchers show that there are several controllable aspects of appearance, such as grooming and makeup, that are related to overall rating of the physical attractiveness. In Korea, where big eyes, a high nasal bridge, and an oval-shaped face signifies beauty, surgical procedures are quite popular and have been found to statistically and significantly improve the individual's facial attractiveness, the largest improvement seen for women and for those with a low initial level of beauty. Researchers have further examined whether the improvement in attractiveness allowed for monetary benefits and ability to recoup the cost associated with the plastic surgery due to the premiums that the labor and the marriage market place on beauty. Unfortunately, the answer is yes. As attractive persons are more likely to earn higher annual income and also more likely to enjoy higher spousal income, those able to make exceptionally large improvements moving from extreme positions of ugliest to the prettiest will be able to recoup the cost of surgery in just 1.3 years for men and 2.5 years for women. This is a bit impractical, however, as the majority of persons cannot make this great jump even with the surgery. Realistically, the majority can expect a more modest beauty increase on average experiencing a 0.4 standard deviation increase in attractiveness scores and may never be able to recoup the cost. Men with mean beauty at onset were shown to be unable to recoup the surgical cost before retirement at age of 65. Therefore, on average, the monetary benefit from plastic surgery is relatively small when compared to the surgical cost. This is comparable to findings look at the women's spending on cosmetics and clothing in Shanghai that show that the, although the additional money spent did marginally increase the woman's perceived beauty and pay, it overall generated little monetary benefit in the form of the higher earnings. Although we may not be able to directly recoup the spending cost on beauty enhancing products and procedures, there are clearly other societal gains for being more attractive. Beautiful people are more likely to go out on dates and are overall happier even when accounting for many other variables. Beauty effect on life satisfaction is both indirect and direct. Direct effects impact women more, affecting happiness independent of its impact on income marriage prospects, and other outcomes. Each individual is clearly endowed with some innate level of physical attractiveness. History and research has shown us that there are clear advantages to being beautiful, which has prompted the response of the mass market as we are continuously met with new products, devices, and procedures that attempt to provide some form of beautification. People will go to great extent to try and increase their attraction. Data from the American Society for the Aesthetic Plastic Surgery showed that in 2013, over 11 million surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures were performed in the USA, with Americans spending over 12 billion US dollars. In that year alone, over 3.7 million injections of botulinum toxin were given over 360,000 liposuction procedures were performed and almost 150 
5,000 received rhinoplasty procedures in the USA. Although literature has shown us that looking good is correlated with happiness, it has also shown us that those who obsess about beauty are not happy. Some of the most successful people have been of quite average attractions, the faces of Fortune 500 looking quite different than the people's most beautiful list. Regardless of the importance of beauty is here to stay. Concern with beauty is not just an aberration of modern culture and Western society. There is a scientific and evolutionary basis to theories of why the human mind finds certain attributes aesthetically pleasing, of why we stay longer at pretty faces, and of why we seek the friendship, companionship, and leadership from more beautiful people. At this point, let's take a historical look at how this phenomenon is perceived in dentistry. Facial attractiveness and beauty is for eternity of global great concern, no matter what is the race, nationality, sex, and age of individuals. Social smile forms the key to our perceptions to attractive and beautiful face of any person. On the other hand, lip teeth correlation is the foundation of social smile. In this respect, we have to focus on our perceptions to the psychosomatic norm in the concerned society. Facial beauty and attractiveness stereotype is based basically on our psychosomatic norm. Psychosomatic norm is norm based on a subjective psychosocial assessment of what is known. The perception of psychosomatic norm of facial beauty and attractiveness and attractive social smile is of continuous challenge and changes through generations. Since discovery of the attractive faces smile of the Egyptian queen Nefertiti, Roman goddess Venus, Greek goddess Aphrodite, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci, Throughout many centuries to the 20th century, the movie actress and models, as examples Elizabeth Taylor, Demi Moore, Julie Roberts, Selma Hayek, and Naomi Campbell. You can give thousands of your idols' names, are considered globally as an idol of attractiveness and femininity by many generations, irrespective of race and nationality from 1370 before Christ to the present days. We can easily notice that they, with the exception of the BC goddesses of the Roman and Greek, Venus and Aphrodite respectively, which were considered the goddesses of love and beauty, are sharing more or less the same characteristic facial pattern in the form of triangular face and somewhat prominent zygomatic area and chin. If you look carefully to their face, we will be surprised to notice that they are more or less matching the Nefertiti face, the timeless idol of beauty and attractiveness. This concept could be considered as a global concept extended to cover all ideas of attractiveness and beauty all over the universe. Her Majesty the Queen of Egypt, Nefertiti, although she is belonged to 1370 to 1330 BC, till now she is considered the timeless idol of beauty and attractiveness. It was stated that Establishment of universal standard for facial beauty will significantly simplify the diagnosis and treatment of the facial disharmony and abnormalities. More important, treating to this standard will maximize facial aesthetics, TMJ health, psychological and physiological health, even fertility and quality of life. There is a very important statement. Focus simply and sharply 
on the significant importance of studying facial beauty and attractiveness and how to achieve as close as we can to the standard norm in view of our psychosomatic norm. This could be the keystone to a healthy stomatognatic system. Nowadays, media by a way or another could formulate our facial beauty and attractive stereotype. The following is a point of debate on facial attractiveness of the beauty in view of the psychosomatic norm and globalization. Continuous watching television station and movie films day by day will implant our perception of beauty and attractiveness. On the other hand, it could lead our orthodontic patients to focus more on beauty and attractiveness than they otherwise would. The drawback of this concept, although it looks very simple, but on the other side of the coin, could end with unrealistic standard for perception of beauty and attractiveness even to the extent that we could have unrealistic expectations for ourselves and the others. But if we think deeply by realistic scientific way of thinking, we can discover that all types of media are urged to employ models and create models which will attract the participants to watch the television station and movie films. We can reach this conclusion as academician working by a way or another in the same area. But what is about the normal participants, our patients? It will be very tough to touch or change his or her unrealistic perception and expectation of the standard of beauty and attractive to realistic one. That is, will be our continuous professional challenge. Nowadays, the scope of is much more panoramic and the issue become much more complex. We are talking about the global media and global models of attractiveness and beauty. Day by day, consciously and subconsciously, form our stereotype of beauty and attractiveness, especially if we could understand that the line between different races, nationalities, and societies have been vanished, and what we can consider local models have been replaced by global one. And the question will be, can we justify orthodontic treatment based on models of facial beauty and attractiveness set by the global media? We are dealing now a day with new generations of patients' global events. Whatever it is, is at their fingertips. The computer forms a major and keystone of their lifestyle. Most of our orthodontic patients are in the area of teenager, and their dreams are much wider than the dreams of their parents. They have their own global dreams and global models of attractiveness and beauty. To the extent that it form the common reason to seek orthodontic treatment. There is a sexual dimorphism in respect of the facial attractiveness. It was concluded that for female faces, observers more likely to perceive eye contact in attractive than unattractive faces independent of expression. For male faces, attractiveness effect were limited to neutral expressions and were absent in smiling faces. It was stated that by other investigators, female preferences for male faces proved to be more variable than male preferences for female faces. In the orthodontic specialty, it is not uncommon to be tackled with patient who, from our point of view, is in need of orthodontic intervention. Contrarily, the patient and patient's size raised very critical questions. If orthodontic treatment could have any adverse impact on facial attractiveness and beauty, in short smile attractiveness, which is already exist. A very hard question to be answered without systematic thinking. It is based on the very subjective judgment of what is to be considered attractive and beautiful smile. The subject will be harder to be answered, especially if we, as a specialist, have the same opinion and much harder if we have the opposite opinion. In this respect, we base the need of orthodontic treatment on a very objective judgment of person dental 
my other question. To cover this inquiry, we have to have methodical understanding of all the dimensions of our very unique specialty. In view of the vast available evidence collected from the database and our gained experience in this respect, computer illustration of different cases of dental malocclusion before and after orthodontic treatment is of great importance in this respect to gain the confidence of patient and patient's side. Sometimes the whole story could be very vague and tough. This rose again and again, the vital importance of our golden rule, inform before perform. We have to take our time and don't rush into orthodontic treatment till we have full agreement on our treatment protocol based on thorough understanding of the concerned case. In this respect, we have to get use of the high advances in the technology of computer graphics nowadays. This advanced technology allow us to investigate objectively the conserved feature of the attractive face, smile, and teeth on three dimension model of patients. To go much deeper in this issue, we have to understand the soft tissue response to underlying hard tissue. It was stated that the soft tissue profile can vary in many ways and still be in balance and harmony. Then it was concluded that the orthodontic treatment must be directed to making changes only to the point where the best possible soft tissue profile is established. In this respect, lip morphology, behavior, and reaction in response to orthodontic front teeth retraction and alignment must be taken with great care. In this admiration, it was stated that the reaction of the lips to incisor retraction cannot be, be predicted with certainty. This is due to many variables such as gender, growth, morphology, and function. The second point which will be carefully taken with great respect is, in adolescence, most of our patients are within this period Soft tissue corresponding to point A is from 14 to 16 mm on the average. This point could be changed by orthodontic treatment and or or orthopedic treatment concomitantly soft tissue following this movement to keep the same thickness. In another study, it was stated that the changes in lower lip, which could be predicted in the dynamic state, is reflecting the hard tissue changes. On the contrary, the upper lip shows a weaker correlation. Averageness and symmetry are the standard of the beauty and shared across the cultures, and moving faces away from the average norm could adversely affect attractiveness. The same concept is applicable in view of the individual psychosomatic norm. Moving faces away from their Accepted psychosomatic average norm will be reflected on the perception of the facial beauty and attractiveness within the assigned society and race. In conclusion, the question still exists. If these changes will be for the benefit of lips behavior and concomitantly facial attractiveness and beauty, in other words, creating more pleasant social face or at least didn't adversely affect what the present patient already have, especially if he or she completely satisfied of what they have. Otherwise, as a whole the way stated that when he discussed the case of the Miss Virginia with class 2 malocclusion, it would be very difficult to correct the malocclusion without losing something in the way of facial beauty. On the other hand, our perception, our facial attractiveness and beauty stereotype in view of the psychosomatic norm and globalization, as a specialist, next to that of our patient and patient's side, adds a significant complexity to our very unique profession. The orthodontics. As was stated before, the advances in computer graphics could be the magic key to solve this continuously raised dilemma of the orthodontics. Okay, this is the end of the first day's lecture. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.